Yo, what up guys? It is time to say goodbye, say farewell. I will get into that later in the video. First, we gotta get the DC2 drivable. So here's what's going on. All right, per the norm, she's been sitting for a long time, but just put the battery back up. It says we have 12.2 volts. Let's see if she starts. Slow, weak battery. We will get that switched out, but she fired right up first try. Here she is purring, you know, warming up. Literally just cold start, first time in maybe a month. That's just kind of the pace of things recently. All right, so while I get the car turned around so we can work on it out of the direct sunlight, why don't we bump back to some footage of the last time I had to drive it and then like when I got home, uh, kind of what was going on to bring you up to speed of what really is going on. So everything's hot right now. I just drove about 30 minutes. I've got some new, really, fresh dark wet spot there which is like is that dripping coolant that's you know just the next thing that would make sense and then for anyone new to the channel this is a 1998 honda integra sirg i've done a full diy restoration on it right here as you see it in this spot here but i bought it and it's been sitting for about seven years it's taken a ton of work and time to get it back at least to this much but there's still issues and problems so that's what we're just getting dialed in otherwise i absolutely love the car the little bit that i've driven it it promises to be a super fun car when it's healthy and not trying to kind of die on the side of the road mission for today the radiator i noticed this way back when i did the initial engine bay deep clean see all this the spider cracking on there like in the hot hot heat we have right now I don't trust that to last a, a summer. And then there was just that seeping and weeping and water. And so I want to get the hoses off. I want to clean up where they mount or where they clamp on. Just see if there's like any, you know, buildup on there that's making little drips and, you know, drops and stuff like that. Because there's those perpetual wet spots that keep showing up. So I can only assume, man, it's rock hard just after idling that little bit. I wonder if a head gas gets bad. That would suck. Anyway, I can only assume, you know, st something's leaking and, you know, squeezing out under pressure. One immediate problem here. This is the new replacement radiator, which is obviously used, Koyo. And you can see this is the old logo. So the seller said this had been sitting for quite a while, but it looks to be in good shape. It came with the fans, which he said, he don't know if they work or not, but they're spares regardless for me. Hopefully they are good, but it doesn't have, uh, what a pet cock, stop cock drain plug whatever you want to call it doesn't have that and the one out of the plastic OEM radiator doesn't fit that so I kind of come up with something for that I could have spent the same money on some cheap Chinese um, you know kind of unknown maker whatever copy radiator and I've used those in the past and they've worked and they don't leak but I've had like fitment issues with brackets I've had you know misalignment of the tabs and ultimately like the cores just aren't they don't cool as good as like something quality name brand. Um, Koyo is obviously like one of the best in the game and they control their own factories, which is super cool. They have, these are all made in Indonesia, but Koyo owns all the factories. So yeah, like they don't try to hide the fact made in Indonesia, but Koyo is overseeing and um, you know, quality controlling and like it's their actual factory in Indonesia. So they make it in a country where they can make it at a more affordable price, but they can still control the quality, which I've always thought was super cool. So happy to have a Koyo. Someday we'll get the new new spec, new logo one in there, but I think this is gonna be pretty darn good. Nice big aluminum thick boy. That's a uh, quality made. All right, so I went through my bolt bag and we have a winner. Obviously this is way too big but at least I know the thread pitch. I can pop over to the hardware store. I'm gonna have to make something work here, but at least we have a match for the thread pitch. The trip to the hardware store was kind of fruitful. I ended up finding another bolt, a little bit shorter, fine thread M10, which is quite rare. So this was literally the only option they had. And this is not tapered, it's not pipe thread or anything like that. So this bolt will go just go straight in there and bottom out, but I need a way to seal it. If I put the thread tape on all the way down the threads or more on the middle of the threads. Once it touches, it binds up and it won't go in there any further. And then I found like this rubber spacer, I guess kind of act as an O-ring. I don't know if that's gonna help me or hurt me, but then I can sandwich it with the washer until I can order, I guess, whatever the proper plug is. I, I really hope this holds pressure. I'm rolling the dice here, but I gotta get this car gone and I gotta make some sort of progress on it. I got, uh, what, like three, three, four days to get this thing gone. Uh, before I trust it, I'm going to just fill it with water, 
to see if any gravity pressure shows any leaks. Under pressure, it might show some different, you know, it might show holes, but uh, I also just want to run some water through it to clean it out because it's been sitting for a while, even though inside it looks super clean. So I'm pretty pumped on that. Under some pressure, no leaks. I think we're good to go. I'm just gonna shake it around and swash some water through there, clean out the core, and then we'll switch it out. All right, a little update. It is fully hot. Good grief, it's hot. Uh, anyway, gotta get it done. But this is kind of what I found could be the possible issue. Well, a first, this inlet pipe super corroded. That'd be a good source for a leak. You know, water can squeak by there. Uh, and then this RTV, uh, whatever surface here, it was kind of you know brittle, hard, old to RT RTV. Maybe some was squeaking by there under pressure. And then right behind where this mounts, there's this like threaded in adapter barb thing. Um, and it looks like it could possibly be weeping, you know, underneath it again, under pressure when things get hot, it could be squeaking by. And then like there's a sensor, which I don't have the socket ready for it right now. Those could also be, you know, dripping down here where I got the leak, but this thing for sure was right above kind of where the leak is. So I'm hoping that will, I'm gonna clean that up, but hopefully that'll resolve a lot of it. I have already taken, replaced the thermostat and taken the hose off there. So that should all be good and clean. Um, the upper hose now it's all off. I'm gonna clean that up. Uh, you know, I could go through the heater core all the way back, but that's not where it's leaking. So for now with the time I have and like the amount of risk I wanna take getting into a bigger project, I'm gonna stick with this and hopefully just, you know, Hopefully I get it, but also just switching over to a radiator that's not going to explode on the first hot day That also makes me feel really good and another small win on the day now that I have a impact driver I Went through and I finally worked on getting these loose which you can tell how rusty they've are They've been seized and I just didn't feel good, you know cranking on it with my hand I did I turned up the power on it and I broke one of them off that's radiator mount, but getting them all loose uh, and those have kind of driven me nuts since I've gotten the car, but I was just always afraid of stripping them all off So that thing, you know, hitting with a little torque. It's getting them loose. So Anyway, I probably said so about a thousand times probably because it's 500 degrees out here. Let's get this back together afternoon or a few hours let's it's, man, it's so hot let's talk about progress or lack of progress or complications or whatever so this is what I got into right, so the radiator is in place but as you saw in the time lapse I ended up having to take off the AC fan because it was hitting the actual AC compressor down there like this thing is thick it looks like I just need to cut kind of like you know trim out the housing of the AC fan 
and then I'll get clearance off of, I think it's just the hose right there touching on the side, so it's barely touching, but yeah, right now it would be touching and vibrating and stuff, so I just took that out. Um, there's the gases, you know, there's no gas in the AC system anyway. I was hoping I could get this in, get that in, and then get the AC charged, but that's gonna have to be another, another time. And then on this side, which is the actual, I think, cooling fan, uh, this guy here, again, it's just, there's no space. The reservoir, I had to take off the lid of the air box to make space for the reservoir to slip by, and it it is touching down there. It's barely clearing on this side of it. It's just this is really tight and touching over here. So, yeah, I don't know if they've updated their design since this iteration or if they just changed the logo and kept this otherwise the same. I mean, the mounting points were fine. There's no issues with that. That's where I've had problems in the past with cheaper radiators. Rad cap, you can still see, says Nismo. That's because this shape is a different shape than the OEM Honda uh, radiator cap, so I couldn't swap over my radiator cap. Probably end up just getting like a Koyo Rad cap just to match, because that says Nismo and it's just kind of <laughs> terribly out of place on this car. You can see I've got my fancy zip tie sock mounts in here. It's touching right here, so I pinched some sock in there, zip tied it up. The stock mounts weren't gonna work anyway, and I don't know if that's a thing, if they're supposed to, if this one comes originally with different upper mounts or what, it's not a big deal to make them out of some, you know, sheet metal, aluminum, or whatever. The radiator lower hose is super tight because it got pushed back so much. Like, it just took up so much more space. I'm a little, a little bit puzzled. I don't think there's any chassis differences or radiator location differences between an SIRG and a Type R, so I don't think there's like any, you know, spec issue. But you, you saw me, I took off the, that because it was hitting and it was just, that's big. And I hope we address the leak or fix something because you can see in the time lapse how much corrosion was on this one. Like I cleaned that all up to fresh, got new RTV in there and sealed that up. I'm gonna leave the system dry just to really give that a chance to set up and then probably fill it tomorrow, give it 24 hours, but that at least should be reset as best as possible. So I could have gotten like an OEM Chinese uh, Yahoo Auctions, no name, OEM style replacement radiator for, we'll just say $160 or 110. Anyway, it was cheap enough that I was just gonna be okay, you know, just rocking that as is. This one popped up for 200. I did not uh, count on like this much fitment issues going on. So that's a bit of a surprise. And I finished it off with a bit of a win. You saw me doing these new bolts and nuts in here. They don't match. I thought I had enough of matching ones and I thought they had big enough washers, but the fenders and the headlights, they both require some pretty big washer head uh, bolts to, to clamp it down. So this was the best I could do. That alone is a huge win and already looks way better. So we'll wrap it up there for today. You can tell my brain is fried. <laughs> this heat just really takes it out of you. So yeah, we'll get this filled up tomorrow, bled, and hopefully my temporary drain plug works and we can get this thing, you know, bled and then running and uh, roadworthy again and not have a ticking time bomb of a upper radiator tank as well. So, oh man, I need some water. fired up right away and I think that has a lot to do with the new battery that Hiroshi gave me. Uh, you saw that last episode picked up the battery from him. So I swapped it out off camera last night. 14.3 now. So a fresh battery. Alternator is probably a year old now but it's new so hopefully some of our charging woes are done. I should still really go through and clean all the grounds and double check all that but uh, that fired up really crispy so hopefully that thing's just you know bad battery was kind of causing some problems. It's already like 80 degrees out here, so hopefully that thermostat opens up quick. Hopefully no leaks. Oh man, mini tragedy here. This flap somehow got outside of the window track, and so the window as it went up was just 
stripping that from the car. You can see it's like all that two-sided tape. Maybe this has been off before and that's aftermarket two-sided tape that's now just flaking off in my hand. But you can see it all there. What the heck? No! Come on, car. I'm trying to save you. Don't kill yourself, please. There we go. Oh, I think this guy caught it. That little hooky there. Jeez. Give me a break, car. Give me a break. Temperature is coming up. Give us some revs. Oh, I love this guy. And no thermostat opening yet. No, not many bubbles coming up. But I realized, just a word for the wise, I realized the car was sloping like that a little bit, just the way it's sitting here on the jack stands. So I put the jack under the tow hook on this side to raise this side up because the outlet or the inlet, whatever you want to say, the fill neck is over here. So there's air trapped here. And once I opened it after jacking it up, a whole bunch of air came out. So yeah, keep an eye on that. Otherwise, I think it's flowing pretty good. Test drive was a success. It runs great. Temperature held steady. And then right as I got home, the cooling fan finally kicked on. It ran for about three seconds and turned back off. So at least it's running as well. So the wetness that was all going on down here, that seems to be maybe cleared up. There was a so much corrosion on that little pipe there. And I think that was probably the source of it. Water was weeping by. We'll see on a longer drive. It's plenty hot today. Everything got up to temperature. So if it would have been weeping, I think I would have seen it. Um, but I've seen that in the past where a whole bunch of corrosion buildup on the between the hose and the pipe will cause a leak. So I'm, I don't want to say I'm confident that's what it was, but I, I have a suspicion that's what it was. And then the fresh RTV in there, that's not going to hurt anything. So yeah, refreshing those little small bits in addition to just getting a reliable radiator feels really good. And now let me kind of like demystify the mystery of the thumbnail, the title, the whatever. The car has to be out of here in three days. And that is because we're moving. So the car is, I can't say the car is not going somewhere. The car is going somewhere, but it's, you know, sticking with me, sticking with the channel. What we are saying goodbye to though, is our lovely red parking spot that we built and did all the work on this car. And so like, I don't know if you ever think you need a really fancy thing to work on a car, you really just need some like patience and ingenuity to make stuff work with what you have. So that little red parking spot and then this one that's not mine but we used for a whole lot of painting and stuff saying goodbye to those go into a new home and the moving truck's literally coming tomorrow we got a whole bunch more packing to do so this is down to the wire this month it's the end of august now this month has been absolutely ridiculously busy that radiator and i've been you know i've been scoping for radiators for a long time that radiator finally came popped up for sale and i it arrived maybe the beginning of August and so after you know doing a whole bunch of work getting the house ready uh, like it was finally like hey I gotta get the car drivable or reliable or to where I feel good about driving it out there so yeah that is that's the gist of what's going on more details on all of it later but car staying with the channel it does have to go somewhere but we're saying goodbye farewell to our beloved little red parking spot I am beat, but we did it. It's been a marathon, like 24 hours of loading this thing up late, finishing that up, and then now we got it unloaded. Little dude and I, daughter's at new school, and then she was working, so yeah, it was, it was up to us, and we did it. Well, end of an era. We say goodbye to our beloved red parking spot and the one that we kind of borrowed to build this car so far. Thanks for everything. So now it's me and little homie in the back. Unfortunately, we have no AC, so it's gonna be a hot drive out there, but he wanted to ride in the cool car. We got Shio Dio behind us. Uh, so yeah, now we just have to drive about an hour down the freeway. Fingers crossed, old girl makes it. Let's go.
ever drive on the Japanese tollways, you're like, man, these are expensive. Well, this is kind of why. If you stop and think about it, like this is all bridge basically, just built over cities or you know houses or whatever's down below, fields. Just keep it straight and flat. It's just miles and miles or kilometers and kilometers of bridges. And then when there's exchanges, like, you know, back there, you're up in the air, like four, five, six stories, you know, on this like curving bypass and in bigger cities, you get multiple layers of that. So like the amount of work that goes into making these roads, literally like as straight as, as straight as possible. Like instead of going around this mountain, we're going to go straight through it for like, I don't know, a couple kilometers. It's a really long tunnel, but they just make it so easy to drive. So, I mean, of course you're going to pay a little extra money for that. Straight through the mountain every time. Don't go around any of them. We're just going straight through. So, yeah, pay some money. Easy drive. As you can tell, we are going out to the mountains as well, get closer to the mountains. So, from where we were before, we're kind of like on the west side of Yokohama. We're going about an hour west. Still in Kanagawa, but just more rural. All right, little tunnel wraps. Third gear. Temperature's staying good. Fingers crossed, it's all good. Hopefully that smell is the truck in front of me. <laughs> no weird lights though. Temperature's rock solid, so fingers crossed. In, in August, like literally the hottest time of year here. Not ideal. Ooh, almost there. So just a little teaser for now. DC2 has a parking spot. Next episode we'll do like a grand tour and show you stuff what's going on. But let's take a look at the DC2, make sure everything we did radiator wise is all good because I mean it ran well, but let's make sure we don't have any leaks. How good is that? DC2 has a parking spot. It's dirt, but roof over the head. We'll take it. Huge upgrade. Oh, fan just kicked on even better. Underneath the roof, we can engage full Honda mode. That's a win. Sick. Uh, heck yeah. All the, the wet spots that were there before are gone. So that dude must have been where all the corrosion was. That must have been leaking and causing all the drips. That's a huge win. The temporary mounts held up. They're still on there. That's good. Man, she's purring. Drove really good. I did one extra like off camera rev when the tunnel was a little bit longer than I thought. I dropped it to third and went to like 7,000 ish RPM or something like that. I still don't super trust the car, but man, it pulled really well. So the whole drive was no troubles at all. So I cannot be more happy. And I am super happy to have it home. So we literally just like did the big move yesterday with the house stuff and everything. So first time seeing this here, pretty darn cool. Like, I, I, thought it would fit but like here it is you know actually in place and we still have more parking so oh man huge wins all around excited to show you guys around next time and show you what's what it's been like such a long time in the making to get here so really appreciate everyone watching hit the subscribe button if you're not subscribed we would really appreciate that or even the like button they're both free they both help the channel and i don't ever say it but hey 
how about a like for having a place to park the DC2 with the roof. So thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Much love. Be well. Bad news. Uh, it's kind of wet. You can see we're either dripping from the temporary plug I put in or from the hose down there. Uh, I can't quite get my head under to see it, but I'm just going to park it for now. We'll get it later.